morning, everyone. My name is Govind Gaur, and I'm BCL candidate at University of Oxford. Today, I'll be talking about investigation on the dynamic strain localization, especially in additively manufactured titanium alloys. And this work has been supervised by Antonio Pellegrino, Nick Patronage, and David Townsend. In this presentation, I'll be laying out the foundation about introducing the top, introducing the problem statement that why and how we do it. Then the main focus of my PhD, which is about the dynamic strain localization. Then we'll talk about a little bit additively manufactured titanium alloys, their behavior, specimens. Then we quickly jump on to the experimental method, which I have used in this <coughs> particular work for the low rate and high rate testing. Then we'll have some results to review and then try to conclude it. Especially in our lab, we try to address the problems which are highly related to impact, such as this. So <coughs> these, are, these are the consequences basically coming from uh, bird injections, foreign particle interacting with our engines, or sometimes we encounter the fan, fan blade event as well. Now to address this issue, if we try to de redesign the engine, which is infeasible and economically it's not possible to come up always with a new design. Instead of doing that, how about we try to break down this problem into multiple phases, such as like coming up with the numerical models or analy analytical solutions where we can try to understand the different stress, uh, stress states in this material and try to come up with the solutions which can, be, uh, which can help us to improve this design. But this solution cannot be done if we don't have the experimental data, which is coming from the different loading conditions. That could be the high strain rate, combined loading, high temperature. But once we have these two, once we just uh, just once we have these two things complementing each other, then we can have a virtual solution which can complement and help us to improve the engine design. In this particular talk, <coughs> I'm going to address, or I would say like I'm just going to complement whatever we heard yesterday in a plenary talk from uh, Dr. Al Fatahi, where he highlighted a lot of uh, good thing about the additively manufacturing uh, techniques. So if you look at this damage turbine blade, which is the consequences of uh, maybe the interacting with the foreign particles or it's been in a service for the long time, it definitely can be repaired using the laser directed energy deposition and it can be reused. Similarly, a bliss can be repaired with a similar technology. But the question comes to us, whatever technique we are using to repair these things, are they able to produce the similar material which have been in a practice for long? So that's, that's where we come in and we try to test all these materials which are produced by these advanced coming from the which is one of the example of digital image correlation and why what we need to address and we need to understand before first one and that how this uh, in layer or like build direct orientation are affecting the localization for for uh, for testing we use this uh, standard uh, tensile geometry which is coming from our vast experience in the lab it was a 8 mm in shade length and 3 mm in diameter and then we created a speckle pattern using the airbrush so that we can perform the digital image correlation analysis and throughout this all the analysis we try to maintain constant facet size and the step size so that we can avoid any kind of a discrepancy which might come later on in the analysis. Now, as we all know that uh, <coughs> titanium alloys are rate sensitive and they are texture dependent. So if you look at the graph, it clearly shows that when we try to, when we try to up the loading rate, it does 
increase the yield strength, but at the same time it reduces the engineering failure strain. Further, if we have the if we try to test the different textures, such as like cosmostatic response of the TR407, it can be understand that in all this tangential, radial, and axial direction, it shows the different yield strength and the failure, which kind of indicating that this alloy, which we are uh, either getting conventional uh, manufacturing or the advanced manufacturing, might show some sort of anisotropy. So now we wanted to come up with the experimental setup, which can help us to actually evaluate this elliptical cross sections or elliptical uh, cross section when it comes to the necking. So for that, we did a little bit uh, more literature review. And for first thing, we for the low-rate testing, we selected the Zwick screw-driven tensile machine. We equipped it with the four cameras, where two cameras were just dedicated to extract the information of the diametrical contraction. One camera was dedicated to, uh, to capture the elongation throughout the process. And then there was a one Zwick, which you see in the end. It, wa it was basically figured with the machine so that we can synchronize all the data when it comes from other cameras. <coughs> And why we did that? So we actually took the inspiration from the senior researcher, Jimmy Ron's work, who proposed that if we have like two cameras positioned on the random location, but the distance is, is known to us, we can do a little bit math, and we can estimate A and B, ma ma major and minor axis of the ellipse. And with that, we can actually estimate the true stress and true strain behavior of material. So this is the one of the example, like uh, one of the test results, what we achieved from uh, at the quasi static condition from this setup. If you see the D1, <coughs> it clearly shows that there is a difference in the diameter contraction, whereas the D2 shows uh, no difference. And this was repeatable for multiple tests. Once we have this clarification, we move, moved on to the estimate uh, engineering stress and its uh, true curve. And if you see this here, one of the major takeaway is like direction two, which was laid down vertically, shows less ductility compared to the other, the horizontal directions. And also horizontal direction shows the less yielding point compared to the uh, uh, compared to the conventional and the direction two as well. <coughs> Later on, b using the previous formula, which I just mentioned, that we estimated our true curve, and the similar trend was shown here. Once we have the clarification about the quasi-static response, now our idea was, can we extend the similar setup, or is there any other uh, alternative exists in the literature we can implement on the high rate testing? So unfortunately, there was none. So we tried to replicate the similar setup on the split Hopkinson tensile bar. For that, we used in house built in Hopkinson bar, which is kind of uh, fully supported and it is able to generate the longer pulse depending on the uh, striker, uh, striker size. And it's, ba it's basically uh, important to uh, for the ductile alloys especially. It is also equipped with the Kurana camera which can go up to 400 to 500,000 frame per second, which can help us to capture the all the necking uh, event when it's taking place. As I mentioned that once one camera is not enough, so we try to replicate the similar setup. And this time we went for with the two cameras, which you see on the, in the figure, which is port one focusing on, um, on a specimen. It's uh, placed on the random location, but it was known to us. And then we tried to do the little math, the same what we did for the quasi static condition. And <coughs> this is one of the examples from the experiment. So now the idea was like to estimate again the same engineering and the true curves using the similar formulation, which we did. And here also we found like uh, the <coughs> D2 direction is showing the less ductility compared to the other two directions. Moreover, it also shows that uh, the, the direction one, which was laid down horizontally, shows uh, uh, a bit more softer uh, behavior compared to the other. One of the thing is also kind of which I learned during this uh, conference is like, the additively manufacturing alloy is also kind of showing the softening behavior compared to the other uh, uh, traditional or conventional TI64. We somehow managed to uh, estimate the true response as well, and this was also kind of uh, confirmed the kind of results we got in the in the quasi-static conditions. So once we have this understanding, we wanted to now like our uh, idea is now to like understand better. So first thing what we are doing at the moment is. Uh, performing the uh, STM analysis on the fracture surfaces, just to compare that what are the features we can actually observe and compare between the two different directions and come up with a little bit more conclusion. So for that, we have started like 3D1. As you can see, this is the cup on cone mode fracture. It has like uh, similarly, which has been highlighted by many researchers that open up pores, defects, and it does have like accumulation of a lot of dimples, which is kind of indicating that ductile fracture surface. Whereas when we try to see the, the fracture surface of the, the one laid down vertically was clear, clean.
then when we try to sit, uh, see a little bit more, you can see that there are like some signs of the ductility of fairing, which can be resulting from the occurrence of my microvoids. It also has some uh, evidences of the unmelted particles. And it also, even though we have not done any kind of quantitative analysis, but qualitatively, we can clearly say that it has higher porosity compared to the uh, other directions. So that brings to the conclusion of my talk. So basically in this talk, like uh, uh, the major takeaway is about uh, the experimental setup to assess the elliptic cross section, which we find out in the, in the literature and we have managed to replicate for the low rate and high rate condition. And this is not just limited for this uh, additively manufacturing titanium alloys. We have also tried for the pure titanium, which was extremely anisotropic and we have successfully like uh, uh, estimated the results. Now in future, like uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be as I guess I learned few things, like I'll be trying to perform some uh, more uh, microstructure studies on the pristine samples and trying to compare with the uh, like pre-test and after test uh, and then come up with a bit more uh, uh, understanding and uh, differences so that I can complement my all the mechanical responses. So this is this is the team for this particular work. Nick, and, uh, like, uh, Nick is my co-PI, Dr. David, uh, and uh, Maureen helped me with a lot of experiments, and Antoni Pellegrino is my supervisor who's sitting here. Thank you.